Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Now, this is going to be a fairly long video because we are covering a lot of things about Eve Echoes in depth for, for beginners. If you think that any of these sections are not relevant to you, um, please check the description and the pinned comment for timestamps so that you can skip to a section that you feel is relevant. I don't want you to have to sit through the whole video uh, if you don't have to. I've put the timestamps in the bottom. We are going to be covering basics, skills, making money, and then some advanced topics like in industry, planetary production, um, and the like. So go and check if any of those are relevant to you in the description and the timestamps below. And please, if you enjoyed this content, make sure you drop me a sub. I'll be producing Eve Echoes content, especially throughout the beta going in to the re full release launch. We are getting our accounts wiped at the end of beta. So I'll be producing a lot of content about what you should be doing right off the bat when everybody gets released into the wild at level one again. There are three main categories of security in Eve. High sec, low sec, and null sec. High sec is anywhere from 1.0 to 0 0.5. High sec are systems that are patrolled by Concord, and in general, you cannot pirate in those systems. If you attack anyone at stations or gates, you will be blown up. If you attack anyone in mining, like mining areas, you are very likely to be attacked. Concord, res uh, Concord response time in mining belts ranges from instant in 1.0 to around 17 or 18 seconds in 0 0.5. Some pirates can get away with blowing someone up in a mining system and then in a 0 0.5 and then kind of trying to battle their way out through, to, uh, through security gates to a lower sex system, but I would never recommend it. Low security systems are anywhere from 0 0.4 to 0 0.1. These systems have policing at the gates, but do not have policing elsewhere. These systems mean that if you are mining in a 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 system in an asteroid belt, you are liable to be attacked by a um, by a pirate or by an, another player, and there will not be a security response in the mining belts themselves, but there will still be security at the gates. Nullsec is anywhere from 0.0, .0 to minus 1.0. These systems are essentially lawless and anything can happen there. This is this is the pirate's best friend territory and you will never really be able to... Bear. As a new player, I very very much would not recommend going there until you feel established or you have a corp or you have a, a, a raiding party and you can do it together. Or you're an experienced EVE player, of course, you can go and get into Nullsec if you want to. Why are the securities of these systems important other than the policing? Well, HiSec generally has the lowest value resources in terms of ratting and mining available. Low sec has good value resources available and null sec has the best value resources available. For ore, you will not find things like special and rare ores in high sec and you will only find rare, super rare ores in null sec. Low sec will have a blend of the both and you'll often find things like spodumane and nice in, uh, in low sec in places as well. That's the general rule of thumb. And also anomalies can be leveled up. So you see when you go to an anomaly on the page, which we'll cover in the ratting section, you'll see that it has a little superscript number to it. That number represents the level of the anom anomaly with one being the lowest, ranging all the way up to six or seven plus. Obviously, high security systems are very unlikely to have leveled up anomalies in them. So they usually provide the worst loot from killing the NPC ships. Low security systems can get anomalies up to level 5 and 6, uh, and null sec systems can go up to 7 and 7+. Seven plus. So you can get really good loot from NPCs in the anomalies and null sec systems, but you're obviously more at risk from being killed by a pirate. Uh, low sec systems have a blend of both high security and low security status, and so often are a good place for new EVE players to migrate to fairly, fairly quickly, because it's a good way to make extra money. That's the difference between all of the security systems in EVE. Well, let's start off with, with the UI. I'm not going to talk about it in too much detail because it's something that will take up a lot of time and I think you guys have got the brains to work it out. But I will show you a couple of tips and tricks that you may not know or you may uh, wish that you not have known after having played the game for a few days. The first of which is when you have loads of notifications, select all, mark red. That will get rid of all of your notifications in the, uh, in the mail. The next one is clicking on this little star system will give you a full map of the star system and you can click on any one of them. This is a good way of locating 
areas of star systems that you want to potentially set up base in. For instance, I'm currently in Metropolis, and I have set up base in Nakugard because it has a um, an interstellar trade center, but also it's very close to Losec, a Losec corner, which is very low populated. So it's really good for me mining during the day right now because very few people are here to potentially uh, take me out when I'm solo mining in my Venture 3, although I can guarantee you I'm going to end up with people coming to this little section now that I've said this in the video, but whatever, I want you guys to be able to understand. So this is a good way of just having a look at all the different mining sections or all the different sections and saying, okay, where can I where can I go? You can go to the Bleaklands. Uh, uh, it's not actually there yet. Okay, the Bleaklands isn't actually there. Let's, let's have a look at... Um Oh, it is there, sorry. So you can have a look at Sink Lysan. You can see over here, there. We go back to Metropolis. Go down to the Bleaklands. Have a look here. Yeah, there's, there's a few bits all over the place. You can see there's a little 0 0.1 over in the corner, all that kind of thing. So that's the uh, that's that map. The other useful uh, feature is in Inventory. If you go to Personal Assets, that will show you where you have got all of your stuff right now. And you can see I've just got some, some Reapers in some random random stations but if you want to go to that station click on the bottom set as destination and that will set up autopilot for you um the same thing can be done if you go to wait a second market um and you want to find your closest itc the nearby itc you can see it here um nakugard that's where i am right now set as destination can't set destination if you're already in but if you want to find your closest trading center to be able to go and sell things that's the one that you want to do so that's basics Let's talk about starting off with skills, and then we'll talk about making some money. Right, let's start off with skills. So, click on your portrait, go to the skills tab, that's pretty self-explanatory. Now, they do actually separate it out into things like generic, um, uh, military, hauling, manufacture, but I actually would recommend not doing that. I'd recommend clicking on more skills, I'd recommend going down to all skills, and then you're going to get this very nice... Um, which I, I wish was more easily accessible, to be honest with you. But you're going to get this very nice setup of just like, um, you can you can browse through it with the with the arrows here, and it'll show you cruising technology, which is your things like navigation and spaceship command. You're going to have maintenance technology, which is things like shield, armor, and defense upgrades. You're going to have electronics. You're going to have weapons technology. You're going to have industrial, social science, apply science, natural science, blah, 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 blah. And that'll bring you to the end of it. Now, let's go back to that. I would say, at the start, you play what you like. So, for instance, you often start off in a frigate. Um, I'm currently um, essentially buying into frigates because I want to play a stealth ship. Um, and the one that's available for Mimitar is like the the bleak or something i don't know what it's called but it's like a little stealth ship i'm thinking about playing a stealth frigate as part of a fleet um but i would recommend you guys train in whatever you like um i'm going to start building up a uh, cruiser after this because cruiser is a good option when you want to go ratting so is so is a destroyer when you begin but i would recommend that whatever you do you do what you like at the start one of the main things that that you need to be aware of is some of the earlier skills like frigate command if you level up to level four in frigate command it doesn't take that long so what i would recommend is just experimenting find out what, what you want to, to what you want to work with and just like randomly put four levels in some of the easier things to level up it doesn't cost you anything other than time to level up your skills so you if you have skills that don't require massive time investments you know like to get to level four on frigate command i think it takes a total of like three hours so randomly throw um, four points into whatever else you feel like doing because actually for the most part um, I'll show you on this frigate engineering. It requires two hours to get to level four on frigate engineering In fact, I'm just gonna do that um, It requires four hours to get to, 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 to level four on frigate engineering because and it's not a big time investment to get to a level four skill So I'd recommend that you just invest in whatever level four skills that you want to um, What I will say is that depending on what type of character you picked Mimitar, Kaldari, um, Galente and uh, Amari, they all start off with a slightly different skill set, but do not not let that completely dominate what you want to do in game. For instance, I'm Minmatar, um, and Minmatar start off with projectile turret skills. I haven't really actually invested that much into projectile turrets so far. I've mostly been investing into, I will show you, um, mining. I've mostly been going into mining, as you can see, my mining and then advanced mining is up to level four, um, and I'll eventually go into strip mining as well. Um, so I've mostly been investing into mining, but feel free to just randomly invest in whatever you want at the start. 
the, the one of the best things to that you need to know when leveling up is that actually getting your tech level up is the most important part and the current tech level goes up quicker um the more the more ran you know skills that you invest in so just just invest in as many little level four skills to experiment with at the start but if I, if you want my opinion on what you should be going for um i'll just show you when i go back so either you're going to have two main avenues for making money at the start of the game mining or combat there is haulage but honestly that's something that comes into later in the game and i wouldn't recommend trying to go for haulage straight off the bat because you need a higher tech level to be able to um start picking up some of the bigger um hauling vessels which make which is where you start to make the real money i would recommend either investing into frigate command or destroyer command both of these are very um easy vessels to pilot very easy to get your head around um i would Especially if you're focusing on PvE, I would recommend shield operation because that's generally the best um, form of defense versus ratting. Um, I would then also recommend going into whatever type of uh, weaponry system that you would like. Um, and I'll talk about fitting when I get there, but mostly it will be, to begin with, small energy turrets, small hybrid turrets, small projectile turrets, small missiles or whatever. Drones will come into it. Um, drones probably aren't there right off the bat for you so whichever um and you can find out on your you can find out on your ships which kind of weapons suit them best um those are the ones that you want to invest skills in then if you want to mine i would definitely just recommend mining or advanced mining and something else that i've been doing is is ore reprocessing because i have um or because i'm very close to um large deposits of spodumen i am um, gonna randomly invest into uh into into training special or reprocessing level five which takes 87 hours by the way but because i'm i'm, I'm close to very very large uh um, de deposits of spodumene uh, i've gone in for the special or reprocessing which increases my yield from those so skills generally take some of the early level skills to level four then once you decide what you want to do what kind of ship you want to play invest in the skills for that ship and the weapons for that ship or invest in the skills for mining um, and, and or reprocessing you can also then go on and to invest if you want to start building which i'll talk about later skills for building which you'll find under the industrial skills and that's what, on, under the manufacturing branch of that anyway oh there we go so those are skills in a nutshell um I'm just going to quickly show you on the ship tree. This is another interesting part of the UI. The ship tree shows you what ships you currently have access to based on your tech level. So I'm going to go to the Min Metal Republic. Um, I invested into uh, small turrets because at tech level 4, there's a really good ship called the Thrasher 2. And you can see each of these ships have their own special bonuses. And that will show you uh, what kind of systems or what kind of... Uh, weapons they work best with for instance the flash of two small projectile damage uh, turret damage by 50 percent and small projectile, uh, projectile turret damage per level from um uh, projectile turret operation so it's a really 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 good um small destroyer that works really well with small turrets so it's a very very good uh pve um and ratting uh, destroyer because it's got a very high damage output with small turrets so the thrasher 2 is, is very strong but if i then went on to let's say uh kaldari a lot of people like to start off kaldari and they have something called the cormorant um i'm trying to find where the small hybrid turret damage so every every ship has its own benefits um that you want to pay attention to um this is just like even this one this one hasn't really particularly got any um this one hasn't got any particular uh, weapon affinity, but it's a sniper with capacitor and small, oh, small hybrid turret power grid needed. So you know it's got some small benefits for 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 running um, uh, for running the, the type of weapon type. So that's how you figure out the weapon type and what kind of skills you want to train into because of that. That is skills. Okay, let's move on to the next. Uh, the next. Okay, guys. So there are three main ways to make money when you start. The most simple is by going to your encounters page, looking at the news board, and picking out anything that you think is particularly relevant. This is, let's accept this one: hidden threat. Go to in in uh, one jumps and annihilate all enemies at the co uh, the uh, the coordinates. So what you do is really easy. Um, where is it? The encounters. We go this. Cool. Shut. Yep. Yep. Let's go. Confirm. So tapping on it will confirm and you have then the autopilot it's one jump away so it's really close so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly end this i will bring it back when we are at that location um and then we can talk about um just some of the easy ways to make money using the encounters
Okay, so we are at the location where we are going to be taking on these units um, for the uh, for the, the mission. And all you can see here is you go to your little eye symbol on the right-hand side. You go up to the top to see um, things that are close to you. And then you can essentially lock onto those units and start shooting them. And as you can see right now, I have started shooting them. Um, I've also used a shield extender and a shield booster, which has completely drained my battery, but I did it because I was taking quite a lot of damage from these guys initially. And all you need to do is, especially when you're playing someone like me, you have to get into close range, which is probably why I should use an afterburner, because it gets me into the range closer. Um, but you just lock on and you let your turrets do their thing. Usually, you shouldn't have too much issue dealing with people um, from encounters. Encounters in general aren't too hard, especially when you start. I have obviously got higher level encounters because I'm tech level 6, um, but if you guys start you'll usually have encounters that are giving you like 30 or 40,000 ISK. And the encounters can range. They can range from things like just killing things like this. Um, they can range from Oh, that was it. Literally just had to kill two things. And I got a Mark V missile launcher from it. Great. Killed two things and I got a Mark V missile launcher from it. That's brilliant. Um, so yeah, you usually just have to kill some things. I'll show you the other ones that you can get your, your hands on if I go to the news board. There are things like, um, again, annihil annihilate all enemies. There's a load of annihil annihilate all enemies here. Um, required cargo, like basically deliver some cargo. It's really easy. You follow the instructions on the encounters. It's pretty self-explanatory. So you guys can, uh, can get to grips with making money through encounters. And that's usually the best early way to get a bit of money in your back pocket so you can start to do other things. Okay, guys, now we're back in the station after doing a couple of those missions. Just uh, for the sake of this chap here, Morton uh, Marlow, he didn't know that... <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know whether I was the real YouTuber or not. So I said I'd include his message in the video uh, just so he can see it when he comes to watch it. Um, so we have now picked up some stuff. None of, I mean, not this, this stuff isn't particularly worth anything, but if, let's say that you actually found something that you wanted to just see how much it was worth. I would select all. I would move to item hanger. Okay, so that brings it all over to my item hanger. Let's have a look at where it is. Let's have a look at the railgun. What's the market details on the railgun like? Uh, obviously nothing. 800 isk is nothing. Uh, view market details, 800. Okay, so these these things aren't really worth anything. I can have a look at the, the, the missile launchers. Uh, 20,000 is not too bad. But for me, not really worth it. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select all of these and then I'm going to reprocess. Reprocessing essentially breaks down components to their um, to their ores or their minerals. And I'm just going to stack everything here so I have all of my minerals stacked up. Um, I have a Galentis ship debris. I don't know how much that is actually worth. Uh, it's 50,000. I might sell that for 50,000. Um, cool. That's how you sell things in the market, by the way. So we've done a couple of those things. What's the other way? What are the other ways of making money? Well, obviously you've just seen me there put things on the market. Market and buying and selling is another way to make money. So what I'm going to do is let's say we want to sell something. I've got 0.12 million tit titanium in my inventory. Um, so you want to find out how much it's worth on the market. You go to view market details when you tap on it. You can see that actually it's mostly dropped down to one. Um, there are some twos around the place as well. You can see in this current station, someone is selling one tritanium for 4.13 for, for an unknown reason, one, one tritanium. What you need to assess when putting your price or putting your, your, um, your item on the market is which international uh, interstellar trade station are you at? What trade center are you at? How far is the closest, cheapest piece that you're putting on the market? Um, and how much are you willing to offset the cost of it being at the station that you're at? So the station that I'm at, it's got 50 people. On average, it has between 50 and 60 people, active people, which makes it a, a small to medium-sized interstellar trade station. Now, people always need things like Tritanium. They always need things like Pyrexate. They always need things like Mixalion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to view the market details. So I see that there's a lot of wands, but they are, what, very low quantity apart from this one at Alentine, and that's 13 jumps away. I can pretty safely sell this at two per Tritanium, um, the reason I can pretty sell, safely sell this at two per, two per tritanium is for the simple fact that people are not going to want to travel 13 jumps to pick it up, or a lot of, some people won't be bothered to travel 13 jumps to pick it up for just one cost per less. Let's have a look at Pyrite. Market details 12. 
Um, 32 jumps is 5. Current station is 90. So you need to com you need to compare that my station or your station price versus the price that is a considerable distance away. So I can see that it's ranging from 12 to 15. I can pretty comfortably say, right, I can probably list this Tritanium at 15. Um, it makes it more expensive than some of the jump, but way less expensive than the other guy that has listed it at my station at a ridiculous price. Um, and actually, we can put that on the market like that. We can have a look at Mexalion, we can do that as well. At my station, currently 25, but it ranges between 20 and 25 anyway. So I could probably safely sell this um, at 25, as the same, the same as the guy at the station that I'm selling at right now, and I'm pretty certain it will sell uh, quite nicely. You can have a look at more expensive things, like um, charred micro units. The price of charred micro unit at this station is 28,000, but on average it's uh, 18,000. I think I could probably sell charred micro units per piece comfortably at 25,000. I think I could probably sell charred micro units at 25,000 comfortably. Um, because people are not going to want to travel. People want their, people, especially when people are building ships, they want their stuff right now. And you have to remember that if people want stuff shipped from a very long distance away, they have to pay for that shipping. So you can offset the cost of the shipping by increasing the price at which you're selling at a station. If you're a very populated station, where there's lots of things being listed there, then obviously you have to compete with the prices that are at the station. You can't sell things randomly more expensive than that. So that is the market. Um, you should do that for everything. Always check the market price for what you're trying to sell. Always, always offset how far away something is compared to the prices that are being listed. If you're at a station that has low competition, then you can sell at a cheaper price at your station, but more expensive than stations that are much further away, which helps you generate more income. And so the final way to make money in the early game that is pretty easy, easy is... Oh, so there's two final ways, actually. There's ratting and there's mining. Ratting is what you've uh, previously seen, and I'm actually just going to quickly show you that right here on this screen. I'm not going to do too much of it because it's a pretty easy thing, but what you do is when you jump into a system, you're going to have a look at the screen here, and you can see Angel Cartel, uh, Cartel Base and Angel Anomaly. What you do is you warp to them, and then you start killing the things like you would do at any normal encounter, and you pick up the the stuff from the wrecks. That and you get and you get bounties for the uh, for killing those for killing those units as well. That is how you do ratting, and that is something that gets better into the lower security systems that you go. Um, when you talk about security of systems, um, we have security systems of. In fact, I actually I'm actually going to do this as a separate thing, so um, I'll probably put it earlier in the video. But but generally, low sec systems have better ratting, and null null sec systems have even better ratting, and um, and um, high sec systems generally don't have as good ratting. So you have to just be aware, um, the security of the system does generally d determine how much money that you can make from that system, but it also increases the risk of making money at that system as well. So we're gonna jump into the final way of making money, which is mining. All right, just as we are about to switch into my uh, mining ship, you can see that my Mexalion did indeed sell, at least some of my Mexalion sold right now. If you wanna check what you're currently selling, you go to the market and you click my orders. Um, like this, and it will show you what you are currently selling right now. So all of my Max Alleon got picked up. Um, and you can see here, like, it, it just shows you what you're currently selling. If you want to increase what you, the amount of things that you can sell on the um, market, you need to train your accountancy skill. You'll be able to find that in the skills section that I talked about before. So you want to switch ship. Switching ship is pretty easy. You go to your ship hangar. I'm going to move into my venture. Oh, sorry. I'm going to set as active, rather. I'm going to set my venture as my active ship. Um... Adventure 3, which is a pretty um, good starting out miner once you've advanced a little bit further in the technology tree. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a system that I want to mine from. Now, there are decisions to make when you are mining. Early game, I would never recommend that you go for a low security system, mainly because you are much, much, much more vulnerable and you're more likely to lose your money. Uh, I'm The only reason I choose my low security systems here is because, if I'm completely honest with you... Um, no one is in this no one's in this system so it's very unlikely that i'm going to get taken out if you are mining in the early game i would recommend in mining in systems that are 0.5 security and above that is high sec low sec is anything below 0.5 security and null sec is anything that is below 0.0, 0. so minus 0.1 minus 0.2 blah 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 
Um, the, the differences in security I will have covered before, but obviously in high sec security, you will have cover from Concord services if someone tries to pirate you. In low sec security, you'll only have cover at the gates uh, if Concord is there at all. And in null sec, there is no security whatsoever, so a pirate can kill you and there'll be very little repercussion. So you have to be very aware of what you're dealing with when you're in high sec, low sec, and null sec. And when you start out high sec, uh, security mining is usually better because it is going to uh, be much safer for you and you can mine things like Veldspar which is just going to give you high levels of, uh, of Tritanium which is going to allow you to get a decent hold on selling minerals. Like I said though, it is important to uh, make sure you're dealing with the processing, the reprocessing skills, because sometimes it might even be better to just sell the ore outright. I reprocess my ore because I've got pretty good special ore reprocessing skills, but um, sometimes it might be more economical for you to essentially buy the ore outright. Another way to make money mining is sometimes when you invest heavily into reprocessing skills, you can buy ore cheaply off the market and reprocess it yourself and sell the reprocessed units um, for a bit more as well. But I'll talk about that once I get back from my mining trip. So let's jump into mining um, and I'll show you how to mine and then I'll come back and show you what we do with the products of mining and Warp we'll just rinse and repeat this, this, particular, uh, this particular cycle. Okay guys, so what you do when you're mining and you can see that I have already found a minefield here, the process is this. You jump into a system that you uh, want to mine in, you click at the bottom which will show you all of the larger warp locations that you can go to that aren't the gates because the gates are directly above them. And you can see here this has got a lot of anomalies. This also has a lot of clusters in it as well. You're going to warp to either an asteroid cluster or an asteroid belt, which will then bring you up to the local targets, which you can see here. And the asteroids will all show you what ore they have inside them. Um, and that will kind of give you the, the heads up on what you want to mine. So, my, my advice is, if you're in a high-sec system, something like Veldspar is always a really, really good mining target. Um, if you're in a low-sec system, Spodumane is, in my opinion, one of the best um, things to mine. And I'm going to show you why. If I go to the skills, and then we have a look at... Um, all right, so where is it? So there's, there's this, the ore, so common ore processing you can see here. Um, there's there's Plagioclase, which is actually pretty good. There is dense Veldspar. There's Veldspar. I actually think um, Plagia class is pretty good. Um, I wouldn't recommend Scordite, but I think like Veldspar or Plagia class are both pretty good because Plagia class has got Tritanium, Pyrite, and Mixalium, which are all really, really, really um, sought after. So those are really, really good ores on the common ore. Having a look at the uncommon ores, um, having a look here, Pyroxeres is Pyroxeres is a really good um, early ore to mine because it has Tritanium, Pyrite, Mexalion, and Noxium. Noxium is really expensive. Um, people really, really like Noxium. So if you can get your hands on Noxium, um, that's always really good to sell later on. It's not necessarily wanted at the start of the game. So you can graduate from something like Veldspar to Pyroxeres um, or Pyroxeres. I keep saying calling it Pyroxeres but it might be Pyrozeres. I don't really know how to pronounce it. Um, but it's a really, really good one to upgrade to. It's got Tritanium. And now I am currently doing... Um, you have a look at the rare ore reprocessing. Uh, what do, I like Crokite from rare ore reprocessing because it's got a hell of a lot of Tritanium, Noxium, and Zyrodine, which are all really high value. But the one that I'm currently going for, which is special ore, you can have a look here, is Spodumane. I like Spodumane because it's got Tritanium in high volumes, Pyrite, Mexalion, and Isogen. Um, so you can actually get a lot of really, really important and useful ores from Spodumane. Um, Hemorphite is pretty good because it's got Noxium and Zyrodine as well, but Pyrite is in, in high demand, Tritanium is in high demand, and Exalion is in high demand at all times. So that's why I've decided to go for Spodumane on my uh, on my ore. But basically, you can go and check the ores, um, and you can see exactly what the, uh, what you need to, uh, to be able to mine them. And to mine, you just lock, you orbit, all miners have a, um, a optimal orbit range or optimal mining range. Mine happen to be 15 kilometers. Um, so I'm just going to now do that and then I tap all the mines and essentially it is going to orbit the orbit the um, the asteroid and mine the um, the ore. And if you're using something like the venture, if you go to your inventory, the venture will have an ore hold. So you can see here that the ore hold is filling up at the bottom. Once that ore hold fills all the way up, you can mine nothing else, and you're going to return back to your base. So I'm going to join you once I've finished mining, and we'll return back to the base and deal with the ore. Okay, guys, so now we're back at the station. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my inventory. Oh, I should bring my iPad up here so it doesn't look like I'm moving, like, looking over to the side. By the way, if you wondered about my screen resolution, it's because I'm using my iPad. The reason I can't use an emulator is you can't share your iOS and Android accounts for some reason. Can't I can't do it at the same time. I'm going to go to my ore hold. I've got 9,027 spodumen. I'm going to put it to the item hanger. Um, and I'm actually going to select all and stack all just to stack it up. So what I can do is I can view the market details on Spodumane. It's about 250 um, per unit. That's about the average right now. It's a little bit a little bit cheaper actually here. So then I'm going to work out, okay, so 100 units of Spodumane. Uh, there's a low battery. 100 units of Spodumane would cost me, what, uh, 25,000? So, tw so 100 units of spodumane would cost me 25,000. Um, okay, so what would 100 units of spodumane actually get me? Um, let's have a look here. And then... Uh, where's the info? I wish you could uh, just see the... Oh, here we go. We click on it. You, ho you hold your finger down on it to get the info. So 100 units of spodumane would get me... Well, 16,000 time uh, trit tritanium. It would get me about 3,000 pyrite. It would get me 300 mixalion, and it would get me 50 isogen. So make uh, the tritanium I know would get me 160. Uh, sorry, it would get me 16,000. The pyrite. Let me just double check what the um, the market value on pyrite is. The market value on pyrite is about let's say at the minimum 10. So if we go back to spodumane, it's 10. So that would give me. 3,000, so that's already 19,000. Mixalion would give me, um, I think 300 Mixalion. What would that give me? Let's go back to the market. Mixalion would give me, what, 20? So that would give me very little. And Isogen would give me about 60. So you're looking at like maybe 3,000 on the Isogen there. 60 times 50, yeah, 3,000 on the Isogen. Mixalion would give me 300 times 20, which is about. 6,000, so we've got 3,000, 6,000, 3,000, 16,000. So, it, it's a, it's, for me, it's it's worth it to actually to actually process the uh, the spodumene. It's very, very close, but for me, it's actually worth it to reprocess the spodumene and get the, the output here. Um, select all, stack all. Right, and then we're going to go and we're going to say, okay, let's, oh no, not split, let's sell our tritanium. At two. Oops, I've just sold it at 4.13. That was an error. So as you saw before, we're just going to go to the market. Uh, let's say Isogen again. Let's see if we look at the market details. It's about 60. So I can probably comfortably sell it for below 70. So let's say 62. And we can sell our Isogen and put it on the market for 62 and then make the income from that. So that is the essence of mining and making money. You can either sell the ore or work out how much you would actually get for selling the uh selling the reprocessed minerals on the market themselves and you can work out whether it's better to just sell the ore outright or reprocess it yourself as a rule of thumb if you have no reprocessing skills it's usually better to sell the ore outright if you have reprocessing skills it's better to um to actually reprocess the ore and if you have a look um i was showing you earlier but i actually have um training now level five uh, special ore reprocessing, which would give me a big, big reprocessing boost to Spodumane, which is the one that I just sold there. So I can actually make a bit more money by reprocessing the Spodumane um, itself. So those are the money making uh, tips. We've got um, so doing uh, the encounters, we've got ratting, we have got mining, and we've got buying and selling on the market. There is other ways that you can make money. You can go and buy cheap um, you can go and buy cheap market um, goods from a very far away uh, market, haul them to a more uh, popular market and sell them at a higher price. There is also hauling, but we won't get into that because it's a bit more of an advanced topic and you won't need it right off the bat. But those are the main ways that you're going to be looking to make money. We're, once the full version leaves uh, launches, there's going to be things like contracts, there's going to be piracy, um, all that kind of stuff. Piracy does exist now, but realistically, it's, it's, a, it's something that is difficult to get into right from the start. So right from the start, you want to be focused on either mining, um, doing encounters, or ratting mostly and then you obviously have things like um selling it to the market let's have a look finally at two extra ways that you can make money that are a bit more advanced that you will usually get into pretty quickly one of which is industry um 
and this is called uh, where you build something in a blueprint and you sell that. Um, for instance, you can build ships. Let's have a look at what ship blueprints I've got. I don't think I actually own any ship blueprints right now. Uh, I think I actually only have power rig. There we go. So I've got like a projectile burst aerator. You could do this for a ship as well. You manufacture and then you have a look at the parts that you need. You can buy those parts on the market if you want to or you can buy um, yeah, get them yourselves. This always works the same for ships as well. It will show you exactly what uh, minerals and which planetary production uh, resources that you need to be able to build your ship. And once you've built it, you can either use it or sell it on the market. Um, industry is a really, really good way to make high volumes of money, especially if you're combining with mining and planetary production. And planetary production is what we're going to talk about now. So that's when you've got those units, you can click start manufacture, and it usually takes between half an hour and an hour to produce something. And with the increase in industry skill, you can open up more manufacturing slots and you can build more. Um, reverse engineering will be coming. Um, that is where you, you use ship debris and you can then reverse engineering um, ship debris or blueprints or whatever and you can find out how to make blueprints that you don't uh, own or you don't own or you haven't found or you haven't bought. Uh, the last one is planetary production. Planetary production is a really, really good way to get very high value resources um, and then sell them on the market. What you do is when you enter a system, you can see all of the... Um, planets in your system you then place a development array if you want to get a specific mineral and usually it's good to have a look at the mineral and have a look at its value on the market so you can see whether it's worth resource mining for instance lustering alloy i can get 307 an hour and it's worth 150 but then if i have a look at noble gas and have a look at the market of noble gas it's super cheap so i'm not going to spend much time um putting money into into noble gas also each each planet has a um an indicator about how much of that resource that you can get for instance condensed alloy and lustering alloy are rich on these planets um so you can have a, an indicator about like how much you can get from that particular planet when you want to pick up your planetary resources what you need to do is go to the planetary resource you need to launch them into space which is i always find really funny and then I can't pick it up in this. I actually need to change ship. I actually don't even know if I'm going to be able to pick up everything in the one ship. You then need to have a ship that's got a fairly sizable cargo, ho cargo hold. You can't go in the Venture, for instance, because if you go in the Venture, its cargo hold, if you don't have ore, is really slim. Um, cool. Set active. I don't want to cool group. I want to get set active. Then what you do is you go to planetary production. And you go to this and you say set as destination and you uh, and you warp. Now I'm going to come back to this once we have made it to the planet. Because basically it's really simple. Once you get there, it auto it gives you a little um, it gives you a little prompt to pick up your loot. And you just pick it up warp and put it in your cargo active. hold. And that is how you make resources from planetary production. You can increase the number of mining arrays on each planet. And also the number of planets that you can place a factory on uh, by... by um, uh, researching using the skill planetology and advanced planetology so make sure if you're interested in planetary production that you put some some time into planetology as a skill because actually there are a lot of valuable resources that you can make from planets and it can actually make you a significant amount of money if you aren't planning on using them to uh if you aren't planning on using them to build things i'm actually going to start charging my ipad just for a bit because you can see it's at five percent but we'll come back once we've actually got the planetary production and we're at the okay guys so i have now got to the planet i can loot this i'm actually going to check my inventory because i'm okay i got i've got plenty of space i was a little bit worried that i wouldn't have enough space to pick up all the stuff turns out i've got plenty of space so that's one of them picked up i'm going to go back to where is it where's planet uh, planetary production cool so i've picked up the top one and i'm going to set as destination and i'm going to go pick up the next set of things and i'm going to do this all the way down the list and that's going to get get me a lot of important drive, resources active. um for building the best way to check whether the resource is worth building is check the market details and check whether you uh you think it's worth putting the time and effort into building um uh building factories and mining arrays but i'm just going to show you what it happens when you when you warp to a planet Essentially, you get there. That's, I think that's the planet. That's very, very bright. Oh, my word. And then I'm going to pick up the reactive metals. That's all that happens. I'm going to do it again. Planetary production. Career old. Set destination. And fly there. And again, same thing is going to happen. 
I'm going to warp, warp to this next planet, active. and then I'm going to automatically be given an inventory prompt, which will allow me to loot my capsule that has been launched from the planet. You do have to be aware, though, if you launch that capsule and someone else happens to be in the area, they will see a small um, notification, especially on their local radar here, that says Excoundrel's Planet Exploit uh, Container, which you can loot manually. And so you, it's always worth checking, actually, when you go to planets that you, that you can um, check if anyone else has launched Planet Exploit Containers, because obviously... Um, you could get yourself some free resources by stealing someone else's. That is one of the issues uh, and one of the dangers of planetary production. So you have to be very, very careful that you just want to kind of go for it. Uh, it's also the danger of doing it in a highly populated planetary production area. So you always got to make sure that you're trying to try and take the least populated planetary production area as possible. Um, because you could end up losing, if you're not quick enough, you could end up losing your planetary production capsule to someone else that happens to be in the area at that time. So I'm just going to collect all of my planetary production stuff, head back to the original base, and we can put them on the market and make a bit of money. Okay, so 40 minutes later, we've got through all of the basics of EVE, and that's given you the best footing to get started and go on and start to enjoy EVE to the fullest. EVE is enjoyed because of the wide expanse of things that you can do. You can join up with friends in corporations, you can go on raiding parties, you can do anomalies together, you can be pirates, you can be anti-pirates. And there's loads more ways to make money than I have said. There'll be hauling. Hauling is available right now, by the way, and you can do it, but it's not particularly lucrative. I imagine it will get more lucrative the more people that play and the more people that need shipping. Um, there is going to be things like defense contracts, you know, being, uh, protecting people when they are mining. That kind of stuff will definitely become part of EVE when the game gets towards full release. Um, and obviously, there's loads of things that you can do as friends. EVE is best enjoyed when you're playing as a group of friends. And so I would fully recommend that when you're in EVE, talk to other pilots in the area, try and make friends with them, join corporations, and get started that way. But, okay, you've, you've seen all this, and you're like, well, okay, I've learned to mine, learned to do some ratting, learned to build a ship, whatever. I've learned the basics of EVE. What do I do from here? Well, the world is your oyster. I find the most fun is going to the ship tree having a look at all of the different ships in the ship tree and saying what the what the hell would I want to play like what ship do I want to uh, do I want to eventually end up um, driving do I want to be in a battleship do I want to be in a cruiser um, there's loads of different things that you can do in Eve um, and I would recommend that you just essentially pick a ship that you want to play, learn its playstyle, have a look at the fittings. Okay, medium turret, medium turret scan resolution strength. It's got four high slots, um, so I can see exactly what this means. And I'm just going to actually quickly, very quickly go through the fittings with you, by the way, guys. The triangle that looks like a Mitsubishi logo, I guess, that means a high slot. That means weapons and harvesting equipment like miners in general, as well as drones or, or drone equipment. You have medium slots, which the two little dashes. Those generally are things like energy weapons, warp disruptors, um, energy nosferatus, which I think are really good for for, for um, PVE. Um, low slots, which are the single dash, which is things like shield boosters, afterburners, armor um, armor repairers, that kind of thing. You have the square, which I believe is power rig. Um, so rigs are completely different. They're a bit more advanced, and I'm not going to cover them in this video, but you can find guides on them. And you have the circular brackets, which mean uh, mechanical rigs, which, again, is something else that is completely different. Uh, rigging is very different, and it's a bit more advanced when it comes to ship fitting, so I'm not going to cover it here. But that's what you're looking at when you see a general set of fittings on a, uh, on a, um, uh, a ship. Choose a ship. This is a cruiser. Cool. Learn the cruiser skills. It be it benefits from having medium uh, projectile turrets. Okay, cool. Invest some skills into medium projectile turrets. Learn the skills that you want for your ship, for your playstyle, and what you want to do with it. Um, the world is your oyster. Test and have fun. If you think a ship just looks cool, bloody play it. It doesn't matter if it's particularly good for what you want to do. Play it because it's cool. Um, you'll learn more about talking to other, other pilots about what kind of ships are good for what. Um, for instance, if you want a basic setup for, for ratting, um, when you get to tech level 4, which isn't particularly good, but let's say you're playing Mimitar and you want to play tech level 4, usually each class or each race has a 
level two destroyer that generally works really well with the, wep the weapon set that is good with your particular class. So this, for instance, the Thrasher 2 is what I'm running right now, and that has a really good setup for uh, a lot of those. I'll show you the fittings. I haven't even fitted this properly. I've just fitted it with some random stuff. Um, but you just put some some auto cannons on it, some small auto cannons that it benefits from. I want an, I want an energy Nosferatu for PvE. And then you can have, uh, right now I've got a shield extender and a shield booster. The shield extender is for emergencies, and the shield booster is just to help me get through slightly larger encounters. Um, you could put rigs on it, but it's not really worth worth it for a, for, for a Thrasher 2 right now, I don't think. But that's my basic setup for a Thrasher 2 for, for ratting, and that gets me through, like, level 5 encounters pretty easily. Probably wouldn't push myself to level 6 encounters, but level 5 encounters I can deal with having the, uh, the Thrasher set up like this. That's basic rigging. Um, generally rigged stuff that you're trained in and stuff that benefits the ship. The ships will all tell you what they benefit in, so make sure you pay close attention uh, to those. But yeah, that is uh, that is the very essence of, of, of rigging out. And you rig out a ship and you basically go into the wild and have fun with it. And that's all you need to know for EVE Online to be get started and begin having fun with this game. Build up wealth, start buying cool ships, become an absolute monster in space, um, and do whatever your heart desires in EVE Online. Cool. Well, I'll see you out there, guys. See you in New Eden.